episode six of Mischief Maker. My name is Jade Prosser, and this is my daughter, Skylar. And we are so happy you could join us. So, yeah, I can't believe, I always think I'm gonna do this early in the day and be organized, and here we are, and it's, what is it, almost four? 4 p.m., it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah. So we're here. So my name is Jade again, and on Instagram I'm Stitch Mischief, and this is my daughter Sky, and she is Little Stitch Maker. And yeah, so this is our little crafty podcast about what we, kind of week we've had crafting, and um, what's new, what's been going on. We have a Ravelry group um, called Mischief Maker Podcast, and also. Um, there's a hello thread there if you would like to come over and introduce yourself to the group that would be awesome our group is growing every day I can't believe we have so many members and it's such a nice warm community in there whenever I feel like a little pick-me-up I go in and read all your projects and your comments and it's just such a beautiful community so yeah so that's what we've been at so what's new oh stay tuned we have the results of our giveaway drawing um, later in the podcast. So what's been new? It's been a good week. Um, normally I have Skylar come in as a segment and she's just sitting here chilling and knitting. So I thought, I thought, why don't you just stay with me? It'd be less like I'm talking to myself and a little more like a friendly chat. So this week has been good. Yesterday we had um, our shop update and that went really 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 good except for the fact that it was you know two days later than I said I would have it so I wanted to apologize to everybody I said I'd have it on Friday my husband's so funny he's like don't over promise <laughs> and what did I do I over promised um so many things lined up that I just couldn't get everything done that I needed to do for the update so yeah I'll get into that one second all right sorry I needed to all this talking we've done so many takes to test I have a new setup here so but first I'll tell you about why um, I couldn't do my update on on Friday so I had I forgot I booked my sewing machine in for servicing <laughs> and I always flying by the seat of my pants really really needed it before the update so I brought it in for servicing it had also been having some issues I had the week before I had to replace my foot battle because it just kept sewing. I would take my foot off my foot pedal and it would just keep going, which makes sewing on labels and bag making extremely difficult. So yeah, so nothing kind of lined up. And then my kids were at my mom's and they were complaining of headaches. And we've had issues all summer with headaches. And um, I thought it was the smoke in the air. And then I thought, you should be wearing your glasses. And then I thought, um, I just didn't know what was going on. It was so weird. Like every second day, my little guy, he's five, was complaining of a headache. She was complaining of headaches. Um, as you know, we've been having some wildfires nearby. Actually, it's pretty clear we have blue sky and it's feeling more like an autumn, early, early autumn day. Um, anyways, it occurred to me, we found her, her glasses because she has a small prescription for um, close work and she thought hey I'll try them and see if it makes my headaches go away and it did so you should go get your glasses and um, now that I'm thinking about it um, so I immediately booked all my kids in for eye exams and that of course happened to be on Friday so no update on Friday but um, found out my five-year-old needs a similar sort of prescription as Skylar. So for close stop reading, um, and <laughs> the doctor. So all my life I've wanted to have glasses, like all my life. And um, the doctor had heard. I'd been having headaches too, so I now have a small prescription pair coming um, to see if it makes a difference in the next week or so when we all get our glasses. So we have like five pairs of glasses coming soon. So that was exhausting, such a long appointment, but good, it was good to get it done. So yeah, so that's what's been going on. And then 
I surprised Sky with something, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> and um, yes, yeah, so finished objects. So I actually have, oh, oh, even more exciting. Sorry about that. Okay, so a few days ago, a week ago, in, in the last week, I was chatting with Tannis of At Tannis Fiber Arts. Why do I say At Tannis? Of Tannis Fiber Arts. And I had noticed that her pictures, all of a sudden, they were always good, but they kind of went up a level. Like there was great depth of field and focus and color, and they were super awesome. So I asked her what, what was new in the camera department, and she said she got a new um, Android phone called a Google Pixel. Um, the 2XL. So I kind of started researching it and I thought maybe this is kind of going to be the answer. So I had been using an old, like an iPhone 6. And that's what I filmed my first podcast on actually was an iPhone 6. So this is a new setup. I've actually rigged a microphone. Now that I'm looking at, maybe I can actually angle it. Hold on. There we go. Art. I've rigged a microphone through my phone. There's a special app thing to do for that. And I think this will be our new filming camera. So it's, so, oh, so she got this, <laughs> she got this phone and then I um, researched it and looked at costs and everything. And it ended up being almost like free for me to get it. So I have a new phone and it's amazing. It's Big and my whole life is on my phone. I do everything. I run my business from my phone except for some some little bit of computer work. And this phone has been incredible and it seems to take really, really good video. So let me know if you think it's um, okay. If the sound's okay, um, I, I would love to hear your input. So I just have to remember because it's, it's a different phone layout so the camera dot is in a weird place for me I have to get used to that um so I put washi tape on it so I can't remember this is where you're supposed to be looking anyways so that's something really new really exciting I hope it makes podcasting easier so that I'm not up till midnight on podcast days trying to get everything set up and loaded up to YouTube so I want to apologize if I turned anybody off on Trillac I highly suspect it's the tiny entrelac and it's the knitting in the round and it's the double pointed needles that has made, oh, and the fact that this whip is 10 years old, that made this project a little less um, enjoyable than some projects are. I'm sure there's some great entrelac patterns out there, but I just finished these up this morning because I really wanted to have something finished and to knock another whip off my list because I found a new one I wanted to make. <laughs> so, okay, so these are my finished Anshalak mitts and you can tell I haven't woven any ends yet. And look, I can do this on my new camera. <laughs> I can zoom in. I'm so excited about this, even for this. For this alone, it's worth it that I can do that. And you can see, so two finished mitts. The pattern is wrist warmers, Noro something wrist warmers. I'll tag it in the show notes. Um, and she doesn't know, but these are for you to have. So I have to sew on the ends. We'll do that with Netflix or whatever, but these are yours. So here you go. Thanks. So yeah, so that's been my only, oh no, I have another finished objects, but that's in the middle of the socks. So as far as whips go, um, see, I'm still looking at my screen and nowhere near the camera. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, whips. Um, it's so now that I'm okay, so I'm just going right into there's okay, pardon me, my brain is like blah, 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 blah. <sighs> okay. My new whips that I'm working on, you've seen on my shelves, I'm still plugging away at those, and today I've been. I, I believe this was out as a kit and we couldn't buy it. We couldn't buy it as a pattern only until today. And I could not resist. I pretty much have all of her patterns. Cute. <laughs> and now I just need to finish things. I already forget how to pronounce that. To roll to go. To roll to go. Yeah. Okay. So this is to roll to go by Caitlin Hunter. 
and it is a three color shawl and it has there's apparently baubles in here too um lace stripes color work i believe there's this pretty little color work section it it just ticks all my boxes so i immediately purchased and printed so i could share the yay good news about this pattern being out so too real to go caitlin hunter super gorgeous so that is in my queue and now that okay so then i finished the knittle this fun oops <laughs> just throwing yarn around here i have a finished pair i'm so excited these are so cute so these are by the pattern is coffee talk socks by tracy miller and i've knit them in this shine and bellini and I couldn't be happier. I love the texture. I love that it's a neutral. Let's see if I can get some good close because I can do this finally. Okay, some good close ups of color. So it's basically a neon rainbow on a neutral, soft, kind of a warm gray. There we go. And the texture of the pattern is just gorgeous. I highly recommend this pattern. It's very easy to follow and it has. Um, the repeats are very simple to rem remember. I also like repeats where there's a distinct line between each repeat because I can match the two. So I'll, when I'm knitting it on that, I'll go down X number of repeats and I can easily count that up, which makes a big difference. So these two yarns, do you know how many times I promised that I start dying and that they would be in the shop? They're in the shop. <laughs> So they were part of yesterday's update. So I have full skeins of shine. I have a full table of yarn beside me here. Um, so shine. There, I just love, I love the rainbow. We know this, but oh, it's so good. And Bellini, it's showing a tiny bit blown out. It's really hard to capture neon colors. It has to do with the um light the way it bounces through neon um and so they're in the shop and i think there's a couple left that are so i have full skeins of both i also have some kits of minis mini bellinis and mini shines and and also i did some I did some mini dyeing, mini sat dyeing. It felt so good to get back into the dye kitchen. It always feels like such a big ordeal to get set up, but once I'm set up, it just, oh, such a good feeling. So I did this little mini set and they all coordinate really nicely with uh, with shine because they're sort of neon based. Um, do you remember names? I'm terrible at remembering names when I'm on filming this yes. Oh, oh yes so my oldest son named this one it's kind of a yellow and green neon color this is called parakeet I need your help with the others because <laughs> um this one I think was it's, it's tropical yeah this is tropical it says light blues and greens kind of fun I know this one surf yeah, this one's surf. It's more um, more intense blues, different blues kind of mixed up. The whole theme behind all of these is sort of like a Hawaii beach holiday sort of. And then this is Luau. Luau, which I'm looking at you. It's not your glasses beautifully. <laughs> and so that's Luau. I don't know if you can see. Where's the right focus point? Huh. And then lastly, Bellini is in the set. And yeah, so that's, there's a couple sets of those left in the shop, not much. So that was really exciting to actually have finished socks, to have dyed yarn, to have it in the shop. <laughs> All those things coming together, so rare for me, but it happened. So now I'm moving on in my socks. So this is my whip. 
is I have my beekeeper socks. I think they're called, does anyone else do that? Roll their patterns up. Um, do I have a title page? Put in the noise. No, I don't. I'm almost 100% sure it's beekeeper socks by Jen Emerson, sorry. <laughs> See, I told you I can't remember names. And this is my first one that I did. It's very hard to see in this light, but it's a beautiful kind of cable. And it's a soft, I'm trying to remember what I call this. I just saw it the other day. Anyways, I'll remember and I'll put it in the show notes. So I haven't really dyed this color for the shop. And I thought actually that I was farther along on this. Since I'm being a semi monog one at a time. What do I do this every podcast? I have a tangle, sorry. So that's my second one. Um, so I need to finish these. That's my next goal. It's getting down to the point where I'm, I'm gonna be in my teens for whips pretty quick. I have the tickliest nose and I don't know why. So that's one project, this is one of my little soaps. And the other one that I'll be focusing on, because it's a different weight, it'll go much faster. Oh, my nose, sorry, is, um, I've told you I have a pattern on Ravelry. This is Simply Socks DK. It's funny how that pattern came about because it was my friend Joy, and I think you might be watching Joy, so hi. Okay, so that pattern came about because my friend Joy ordered some yarn from my shop in DK weight, and she couldn't find a pattern that was sort of simple and quick and customizable to knit. So I drafted one <laughs> and um, ended up actually publishing it. So this is my, this is one of the, actually the cover socks. Funnily enough, I knit them in, there's the color. I think that's actually a pretty accurate color of... I knit it in, I don't know why I can't remember anything today. I just need more coffee <laughs> in my yarn, named to be announced at the bottom. And I just need to cast my second one on the other, the other pair. So my cover photo has two, two sock yarns and the other one's done and I gifted it to a friend. So I really need to just finish this pair. It'll take me an evening. It's such a fast sock to knit. Um, so that's my plans in the sock department. Nothing else. I can't wait though to clear through these socks so that I can get on some new socks. I have a little queue of socks I can't wait to knit up. Oh, and remember I promised last week, I forgot to, to give away a sock pattern, which somebody gave me to give, they gave me a copy and they also gave a copy away to give away, which is so lovely. I absolutely love, love our group of people. Anyways, it, the sock pattern is called Kentworth Socks and it's designed by Amanda Purser. And I'd like to, so last week I said somebody in my whip or finished object categories on the Mischief Maker podcast group would win a copy of it. And so that is M Jolene 96 on Ravelry. So Jolene, um, Amanda and or I will be in contact with you to send you your pattern. And thank you so much for, for being a part of our group. And thank you, Amanda, for your generosity and your patterns. It looks like a really cute pattern. So that is it for knit all the socks. So yesterday was the update. I haven't shipped out orders yet. Oh, had an idea. Okay. Um, my brain. Okay. So I, it was my biggest bag update to date. Um, and I've certainly never done this many bags and yarn ever. And so what I did, I think I listed 20 bags. Oh, and here they are. <laughs> Giant stack of finch buckets. Um, so almost all of these are cleaned already. There's only a few, I think, a few Alice in Wonderland prints ones that are left in the shop because you guys are amazing. Just amazing. I can't believe, okay, for starters, I was two days late setting up my 
my update. So that was, I felt awful in the first place. And then I, yesterday I was like, I'm doing good. Everything's ready. So I go to load all my photos into my shop and it took forever. I said the update would be three o'clock. It was like 3.30 <laughs> and yet you guys were still there. And thank you. And um, I just couldn't believe that it went so well. Um, yeah, so there's been a lot of fun finch buckets. So this is just 20. Do you remember the 120 bags that I cut out? These are 20 of them. The rest, or most of the rest, will be going to Knit City with me. But there are just so many lovely, I, I just, I love fabric designers right now. The, the, the fabrics people are coming up with are amazing. And I'm pretty sure you guys can tell that I really like one particular brand of fabrics and that's cotton and steel because they make all these pretty um, fabrics. And so these are all off to their new homes. After this, I get to do shipping. So fun thing, I think, let's see. I think I have two, two big Alice's. So after I am sold out of Alice, fabric. That is it for Alice because I'm officially maxed out. <laughs> and then that says, just double checking here. I'm still working through the tweaking of this new filming program and it just keeps popping up saying file size. I don't know if I'm filming in the wrong size. So last Alice. Again, these ones have just the pockets on the one side, on the inside. Anyways, Lots and lots of sewing's been happening over here. So yeah. Oh, another. This is that uh, another print in Anna Maria Horner friend, which I love. See how big these are. <laughs> they notice. Okay. Other exciting mail deliveries. Let me just scooch this back to keep them away from my coffee. Is I finally ordered for the first time. Of course, this box isn't open. Ever properly made business cards and I'm ecstatic with how they turned out I have a business card and it sounds it's such a little thing or it seems like such a little thing but it's a really big deal to me um, and this, it's Vistaprint that I ordered through and they have been amazing. I also ordered some stickers and I ran into an issue with them being slightly off center, which kind of, I'm very particular about things being just so and such. So um, they've reprinted them and said, no, it wasn't your file. It was the paper, the way it was cut out or something. So that's on its way back to me for all our stitch markers and for packaging and bags and such for Knit City. So everything's starting to fall into place. It's very exciting, right? So this guy's going to be with me and it's, you recognize it. It's very, it's getting close. I'm getting stressed out. It's so close. <laughs> okay. Stressed out, but so excited. I was watching, um, Hohi Locatelli's fall knit along podcast this morning journal and she's talking about preparing for her trip to Canada to come to Knit city and I'm so excited it's funny the more I see her podcast the more I realize she's the sort of person if I knew her in person in in real life I feel like we'd be friends she's so kind and sweet and genuine and there isn't a fake bone in her body she's so nice um so maybe I'll get to meet Hopi this year that would be fun. There's a bunch of big designers coming this year. So what is up next? Do you feel like chatting a little bit? Okay. So what's new with you? Um, so mom recently got me, let's speak up a little tiny bit. Mom recently got me a sewing machine as like she surprised me and it was, it's just such a cool sewing machine. So, okay. Okay. So when I went in to go get my new foot pedal for my sewing machine, because the connector wasn't working, um, I was chatting with, I'm looking for a sewing machine for my daughter and, um, whatnot. And the guy at the sewing store, sewing machine store was 
showing me probably the best entry level, sturdy, reliable sewing machine. And it's a Janome. So I brought home some information about it. And me and Sky have been chatting about it. I'm like, okay, so after Knit City, we'll, we'll get you a sewing machine. And then I had my pre-scheduled machine servicing that I'd forgotten about. So I went in to bring it in and I kind of hyperventilate just a tiny bit at the idea of not being with my machine. So I brought it in and I was doing same day service. And coincidentally, someone had just brought in, when you buy a machine there, you can upsize your machine for like, not for free, but you can, within six months, you can return your trade in your old machine, your, or the one you just bought if you want a different higher end model. And someone had just done that and they had brought in the exact model that me and you had talked about getting. And so it still has all its warranties. It had never even been used. It has sitting in the box, exactly perfect and tested and everything, everything's fine. And so I got that on sale. And so when I got home from being at um, Oma's, I, barely noticed it was like the second thing I noticed other than a big desk I noticed there was a sewing machine and I'm like yay <laughs> and it works perfectly it's like super smooth it just goes on perfect and it's very easy control to foot pedal mm -hmm. you had some problems with the other foot pedal right yes yeah so on my old Ken Moore Sky's been sewing with that and it's just it it probably needs a servicing but the foot pedal was kind of like nothing, 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 and then full force. And this one is much more even, and the stitches are beautiful. Oops, asking me to um, teach her how to make bags. And so I sent her some links and some patterns, and she read them. <laughs> she read them all of my own patterns and stuff, right? So what do we do? So we made a little twiggy pouch. She walked me through the whole tutorial mm -hmm. on how to make it. So we made this cute little one. So we made this together on her little machine. Parts of it I sewed on mine just because um, she wasn't ready for zippers yet. Zippers are kind of a new thing. But yeah, so there it is. So that's a twiggy petite, right? Yeah. So what was your favorite part of using the new machine? Like do you? I just like how you can, I like how it goes so smooth, you can just keep on doing it and it's, it's so easy to use. It's sensitive so I can just lightly press it and it's my perfect speed. Mm -hmm. And so, well, that's fun. So I can slowly speed up every single time I got better at going, not swerving. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, your, your stitching um, has definitely gotten really good yeah. with the, uh, with the new machine so that was a big deal for her and for me um having her with me so now so when she was coming home that day i i wanted to surprise her so i tried to rearrange this room is very limited space so i had to figure out how to get her a workspace in here that wasn't her school space because that's already packed and tiny and so I remembered I had an, my old sewing desk in the garage, so we brought it in and now it's right, actually this camera set up here is sitting on my old sewing desk and it's like an L to my sewing desk. So this room now has one, two, three, four, five, six desks. <laughs> it's a little extreme. It's not perfect. It kind of covers the fireplace a little bit, but it's just gas and the pilot light's not on it, but it'll be fine. But, um, yeah, so now she has a space here that we can work and we can easily just turn to each other and then we'll have a shared ironing board here. Um, so that was super, there's my word again, super exciting. Um, what else is new? So this is back to school week. So last week also on Friday, um, I had meetings with two of their three teachers this year. So, um, Gideon's going into kindergarten and I got to meet with his teacher. So that's going to be interesting this year because it is a different sort of program than what we're used to. Usually in our old program, which we're discontinuing because they had major cutbacks in funding, like major, major cutbacks. So we're in a new program 
and kindergarten is more like it's very flexible is the word that's used it's very not structured so there's kind of you know structure but um the teacher says i'll know more once we can log into our program so we'll see how that goes but um he's a kindergartner but he's almost reading and he's gonna need to be challenged quite a bit this year so that was interesting talking to her i'm so happy to hear that in the higher grades like skylar is going into grade five five and it's much more structured and what do you like to, this year it's a little different for Sky. I like how it isn't all just like, they basically, they put stuff together into one day. Instead, it's, I actually get divided subjects. Like, I don't just get science. I get stuff like physics, chemistry, that sort of cool stuff. I've always wanted chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> you are so my daughter. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's different. So in the earlier grades of elementary, um, I, she would get a day of schoolwork and that would kind of have everything blended into one day, except for math would be additional to that, right? Um, this one is more divided subjects, more like an intermediate. Well, it is intermediate. So yeah, so it, it's a slow start to the school year when you're in distance education. You have to wait for all the teachers to get in and get your logons to everything. So this year will be a lot of online, less paper and books and stuff. So that'll be kind of nice. Um, yeah, so that'll be. So we're not quite set up. We haven't started yet. We're still waiting on teachers. And then I haven't heard anything about Dash's classes yet, but uh, that's to be expected. It's just day one. And so that's what, what kind of your week in crafts. You've been knitting. What else have you been doing this week? Or did you have something else? Let me see. Um, you can always interrupt me. <laughs> I don't think there was anything else. Um, oh, right. This week, me and Dad, he's been teaching me more about programming. I've been learning a lot more. Like, I'm trying to make sort of like a small, tiny game. Mm hmm where it's no pick. So Skylar has, um, her dad is a computer, not genius, but he's very intelligent when it comes to computers. And I do not have that <laughs> talent, but Sky's always been interested in programming. So she and Sam have been back and forth talking, um, programming for, I don't know, when did you start programming? Like a year ago? Yeah. Yeah, so she can, she just code and <laughs> I'm like, hearing her and Sam talk, it's like another language, but it's quite entertaining. So she's working on developing a game. So that's quite fun. Um, with her segments, I try to, I'm, I don't want to stress her out about crafts. So I'm not telling her to do anything. She just, if she has something to share this one week or not, she can share it. Or she can hit, come hang out with me. This is like a little girl time. Um, and yeah, so this is kind of just how we'll keep it easy, simple. Um, yeah, let's see, where am I at? Oh, okay, so we did a giveaway last week for the take along pouch, and this was given to us by Alana Dacus of Never Not Knitting, and it's the take along pouch kit. It has the pattern, the fabrics, the interfacing, and this is for the Herb, Herb Garden Evening Color. It's the small size in dark, so I made one last week, and I really like, I've been using this to take around my knitting, like to the optometrist, not that I had time to knit at the optometrist, but I never go anywhere without knitting. Um, so it's this bag that you'll be able to make with the pattern. There's the fabric and the winner. Okay. So what I had you guys do to enter was to tell me what your first sewing project was. And I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed reading this, this, um, thread. I don't know why the word thread never comes to mind. Um, <laughs> it was such a good, such a good, uh, trip down memory lane. I think for so many of you who entered, your first time sewing, I had to like stop myself from like responding because I didn't want to water down the entries, but they were so 
many awesome stories and funny stories and oh, loved it. Loved it all. Thank you for entering. So that was great. So the winner of that is, do you want to say? It is, say nice and clear, DRZ Debbie. Yeah, so I will email you. Um, the Ravelry name is DRZ. We did a random number generator from the number right before I started podcasting or when I was doing my notes and did a random number generator and you are it. So this is yours. We just need to send it to you. I will package it up nicely so it doesn't get squished in the mail. But yay, congratulations. So that was exciting. Um, Q and A, so much smaller <laughs> Q and A than last week, thankfully, because I've already rambled enough. Um, I just wanted to say okay, two things. First thing, thank you for all the beautiful messages that I received after kind of opening up about my our story with our family and how we got here, and um, it was really, I was really nervous filming that. So seeing the comments that came out of that and the stories that came out of that was really heartening and it made me happy. So thank you for listening to that story. And if that wasn't what you're here for, I apologize, but it was just a part of our journey. So the other thing I wanted to say is Q and A question and answer. It's just me. I'm not an expert. I don't have a degree in anything. Um, I'll answer to the best of my ability but it's only based on my own experience. So I'll try not to answer on things. I shouldn't have, um, there was one thing, I'll come back to this. <laughs> um, there's obviously different opinions and I would never try to steer someone wrong. So obviously people need to weigh their own choices when they make, but, um, and I wanna apologize to the Norwegian parlors out there. I didn't mean to come off strongly about anything. I, just had never done it and it looked complicated and difficult and the thing is I this morning figured it out how to do the Norwegian pearl and I actually think it might be useful in a ribbing situation so I'm going to try it next time I do a rib but um so there's a benefit I, I learned something new and um yeah I just wanted to say I don't mean to come off all opinionated it's just for the things that I do know black and white and you should only do this and do that anyways moving on so one question was do I ever go through phases where I want to work with or dye one color over and over I wouldn't say I do that um, I would say though that when I am into one color or one color family or often it'll go from fabric to dye so if I'm really drawn to a fabric I will find myself wanting to dye colors that work with the fabric. I don't know why that is. Like this, it occurred to me this morning. So this bag here, I don't even know who this, somebody owns this bag, it's not mine anymore. So this bag was subconsciously the inspiration for this yarn. <laughs> and I didn't realize what I was doing until I had done it. And then I was like, oh, it's because I really am digging this color. Um, I don't know, it's just so happy. So this is my, my new colorway that went into the shop yesterday. Let me just sort of twist this up here. So, shocking. <laughs> but there you have it. There is a subconscious color pairing. So I dyed yarn after making fabric and it looks just like my fabric. <laughs> um, and of course, so there's even, so this has little bits of pink in it. There are even little bits of pink in the bag too. It's hard to tell from here, but uh, in there. Yeah. such a weird thing when you don't know you're doing stuff and it's all subconscious. So that color is Wild Honey, and 
I actually didn't think it was going to work out the whole time I was dying and I'm like, this is ugly. Why am I doing this? Should I even do my second pan of dying? And my husband's like, no, just wait till it dries. I think it'll work out. And then I saw it dry and I'm like, oh, this needs to be on my needles now. Of course, it's not going to be. I'm going to be really good. I'm going to wait. I did have to reserve myself a skein because I accidentally cut. I was snapping something off the, the ties and I cut the yarn. So that's my skein. Um, so that went into the shop and it was gone like instantly. And then I listed pre-orders and that is almost gone for Wild Honey. So that the pre-orders will be on my sleek sock base. This is my classic sock, um, which is at 25.75 base. The pre-orders are on my sleek sock, which is an 80-20 two-ply. This is four-ply. So yeah, so that was um, the answer to that, that question. I don't necessarily do something over and over. I tend to get tired of one thing if I've done it a ton, and then I'll move into something else. I just wait for the right inspiration, and then that, that'll be my new direction. Um, so yeah, so question answer. What's my favorite thread and color? I use, for basic sewing, I use Aurifil, um, the 50 weight. I buy it by the big cone because I hate running out because I watch it on the thread spool and I get really stressed out as it's getting lower and lower and lower. And I find this lasts me a very long time. So I use this for everything, for bag construction and for quilting. It's a great weight. It's a great thread. And for top stitching, this is still in the machine. I use this, uh, I could use an Aurifil thread. I just don't have easy access to the weight and size that I want. I could always order it next time, but I've been using this uh, signature 40 weight thread and it is in the color parchment and it's a great top stitch for a bag. Um, like when I say top stitching, I mean like the stitching along here and then top stitching up at the top there. Do you see that? Yeah, like that. So I use a, this thread. I used to, in the old days, I used to match thread color to project bags. I just don't have time for that kind of <laughs> matching and thread buying and color worrying about. I just forget it. So I just use cream always. Pardon me. And, um, yeah, so those are my favorite thread colors. Another question was, what's my favorite knitwear designers that speak to me? So I found this question mildly funny because I don't know what that means. Other than mm, what knitwear designers do I know that on personal levels? Um, okay, Tin Can Knits first. Love them. I've been a fan of theirs from the very beginning. I uh, don't know Emily as well, but Alexis, she's from my neck of the woods and every knit city or sometimes I'll see her at 88 Stitches. Um, she's just a sweetheart. Her family's a sweet family. Their patterns are amazing. They're just so, so great. Tin can knits. They are awesome. Um, also Knox Mountain Knit Co. So one of, so I knew Sasha before I knew Willow, but they are a pair that design um, knit, knitted goods, knitted patterns up in the Okanagan, Kelowna area. And so I know them, they talk to me. <laughs> oh, also, this is, um, my Coffee Talk socks are by Tracy Miller. She's sweet as can be. Um, what about those that don't speak to me? <laughs> There's lots that I've, they're my fave designers, but we don't have a relationship because I'm just me and we haven't met or anything yet so um Hohi Locatelli I would love to like knit so many of her patterns and I have them queued up I'm just waiting man when my whiplets gets down it's gonna be like and this new pattern and that new pattern I can't wait to start casting on again um Andrea uh, Maori I love all her patterns she also released a new one this week which I may have to one day cave and buy, but um, 
Another one is Caitlin Hunter Boylan Networks on, on Instagram. So we have zero <laughs> relationship other than they make beautiful things and I buy it. <laughs> I buy the pattern. Um, yeah, so those are some favorite designers that I keep coming back to. Um, one person asked, what is the mini toadstool pattern on my wall? So this one here. And I'm just gonna pull it down here. Okay, so this is a little toadstool mini that's probably covered in dust that I made. There we go. Um, the pattern is called Forest Floor, and the designer is Liliella on Craftsy. And she has several, many actually, beautiful patterns that are. Uh, you call this this isn't uh, English foundation paper pieced so this is all to the non quilters you sew your fabrics onto paper that has kind of like a guide of where you need to put your fabrics numbered and then you get this cute little mission so aqua and red again always a favorite pairing for me the other question was what is this fox pattern now it looks like it's a well i guess it is a pattern but it's um it's not a quilting pattern it's stitching so it has quilt fabric quilting fabric in the back so this is by oh i love that it can zoom in this is so exciting okay this is by wild boho um on instagram now nicole vogel singer vogel, vogel singer <laughs> is a friend of mine and she came out, it feels like it was last year, but maybe it was, might have been older than last year. Um, this book where I have a huge queue of patterns that I want to make from it called Boho Embroidery. And way back when this book was in development, she asked me if I would want to make a pattern or a project for the book that she could embellish. Now let's see if I can find it. So I made a sew together bag. Here it is. So she sent me the fabrics. I'm trying to remember if they already came embellished. I think they might have. She sent me the fabrics and then I made a sew together pouch for the book. And then she sent me the book. And when she sent me the book, let me open up the hoops from the book. Little sweetheart that she is. Can you see? I can't see. Um, where's the camera? Well, it's really hard to see. Anyways, so this is one of the hoops in her book. And it was for, it's technically for Atticus, but his room isn't really decorated. So it's this little fox, and she talks a little bit about how she makes it in the book. So yeah. That is from Nicole Vogelsinger again, Boho Wild Boho Embroidery by Wild Boho on Instagram. So those are the two patterns that you guys are asking about. You're also asking for a little tour of my sewing space, so I'm going to do that. But first I have to turn off my phone and then I'm flipping the camera around. Hi, okay, so this is a little tour. Um trying to cut out the mess. <laughs> okay, so this is my mini wall and my sewing space. I'll try not to go so fast that people don't get nauseous or whatever if I'm whipping about. Um, so here's my mini wall. This one was a gift here from a friend and another one. I believe these were Julie. And this one is a... Whoa! <laughs> it's quite high on my wall so I'm trying to focus. So that was a mini quilt that I um, made for our Vancouver Modern Quilt Guild showcase that we had back in 2016. And this is one of my patterns. It's a vintage carousel mini that is up in Craftsy. This is the one that I, it's a, I have a big pattern and the mini pattern in there. And these are my little guys you just saw. At least it's good light this time of afternoon. So, Okay, so remember Nicole from Boho Embroidery. So years ago, I bought this little 
hoop from her. She used to make these and sell them. They're so gorgeous. And that one was, let's see if I can get up higher here. That one was, it's just so colorful and it has numbers and colors and low volume and it was everything I loved. This was a mini from Felicity Quilts. She has a blog and she's Felicity Quilts on Instagram as well. And here's a mini, this little sweet one, Sip and Stitch. This from my friend Raquel, Color Me Happy on Instagram. And this one is from So Precise, also a gift for me. And this was my first time making a wonky star and I just loved it so much I started I did sort of like a matchstick quilting on here. I love thread texture. This is another one of my um, my own designs, that, that many there. It's a, you know when you make a quilt and you have all the bits that you cut off of a pattern? And uh, to make half square triangles, you cut off uh, triangle ends. And so I saved all my bits from a quilt I made for my niece when she was born. And then took all of those little bits and made tiny half square triangles and made them into a mini. So there's a million pieces in there. And this is one of my up here absolute favorite treasures. This is from a designer um, in Japan, Ayumi. Uh, her name on, sorry, on uh, Instagram is Ayumi Mills. And she made this for me as part of a swap we were on years and years ago and she felt that a rainbow of fabric bolts suited me and she she did it and she pieced all those little bolt ends sorry this is super awkward <laughs> um, all those little bolt ends she pieced them those tiny little white I just love it so much it's such a sweet thing she hasn't really been on active on Instagram she has, a, I think, a book and some patterns. Beautiful designer. So, yeah, so this is, I'm gonna back out a little tiny bit and try not to make people nauseous here. <laughs> so this is my zipper rack. I remember I told you last year, a few podcasts ago, that I would zoom in and give you some shots. So these are my zippers. Pull this light sideways here, okay. So these are my separating zippers. I keep them all together and my boring colored zippers and none of my colors i hear my baby it's time to go soon so this is my whole zipper rack i'm trying not to oh, my spinning chair here try not to fall <laughs> okay so i also have just remembered i had a question asking about this and that just reminded me i had another question um so this is my thread Holder. I think you can actually make it flat, the little legs in the back here. Let me just flip it. <laughs> Do you hear him? He's so loud. They fold in so you could hang it on the wall. But I'm trying to reduce wall damage at this point. And it's the brand is June Taylor. And yeah, it's been super handy. I got it at a warehouse near here, a sewing supply warehouse. Um because I can buy wholesale there. So I found that there. There's also a little one for bobbins that I'm going to get next time. Hey, you remind me to put that on my list. Bobbins. Um, okay, and then this is the first little tiny... Aren't these burns awesome? I constantly am burning myself. <laughs> I'm such a klutz. This is my little tiny Berger de France. Um, I, I don't even know what you call them. I still have the cord that I made with this. It's kind of like an eye cord maker, but it... What do you call that, Sky? A loom? A, it's like a loom, yeah. And then my little bowl of floss that you've all seen. So here are a lot of my bag fabrics. I tried to kind of clear out the shelf. It was kind of crazy, but this is my sew together bag that I made with Allison glass fabric here. Zoom in for you guys. And then, so this is, yeah, although I do have some bag fabric throughout. And of course, if I can, I use up my own stash. So this is mostly, part of my horrible mess, my own stash down here. And you know, I just realized, hold on. I just realized I should have been filming the other direction. So I don't know if I ruined things. Oh, 
sorry. Okay, so this is my fabric stash, not including scraps. And there's a few really big backings that are in my a different part of my house. And then if you spin it, pardon my messy under floor there. Okay, hold on. I have my exposure locked. There we go. And here is so my sewing area. So this is my desk, my machine. I don't know that if you guys even care about any of this, but this is my Elna. She's my baby. And my sewing desk and my view. So that's my backyard, my super dry grass that needs some TLC, but maybe we'll get rain again soon. Oh, and this is a thread catcher my friend Raquel also made for me with a pin cushion on the top. And does anyone else <laughs> happen to have a rubber mallet under their desk? I use that for bag hardware. And then, oops. So normally it's not angled like that, but that's my daughter's. You can tell I wasn't prepared because my water bottle's there too. But it's my daughter's sewing machine. So we are kind of blocking the fireplace in an ideal world. It would be a different setup, but there's my fireplace. And over by the window, which is covered in stuff, is my chairs and another desk, or rather one chair and then another desk. So yeah, that's our space. It is super tight, but we really like being all together. So there you are. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that little tour of our sewing space. I apologize if any of it gets cut off because I didn't think to spin the phone the other way. But yeah, so thank you for tuning in for episode six of Mischief Maker, and we hope to see you soon. Um, in the meantime, I look forward to any chatter in our little Ravelry group. It's been so fun to get to know people better. And yeah, till, till next week. Happy making!